Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've come up to my craft room to have a little play in my snot book as I've started calling it and um, today the page I want to have a go at is this one. All the pages I'm going to have a go at are 211 and 212. So this is not a book, this is a wall or private space. So it says, open the book, stand up like this, use it in public when a little privacy is needed. Well, I'm going to be doing my own thing with, the, with this one because I don't think I fancy doing that. You may cut a hole here to spy in some way. Now, I quite like that idea. So, at the moment, I've got a rough plan in my head. I'm going to paint this up to make it look slightly more realistic wall. I'm going to cut a window here and have an eye on a little pull out tab so I can make the eye peek back and forth like a spy hole. And then I want to paint graffiti on here to say Arty Farty Annie, which is my, my kind of nickname with friends and my blog name. So I found this amazing site called graphwriter.com. It's all free. I don't know, maybe there is a paid version, but I was able to do all of this free and I think you can do much cleverer things than I've done with it. I'm not that techie minded. Um, so I can <laughs> took me a minute to work out how to, but really it's very straightforward. So what it's enabled me to do is to play around with the words arty farty any and reproduce them in this graffiti style. I think it's amazing. You could pick all different colours and fonts and so I've, I've saved them to my um, laptop in a few different colours just to give me an idea. I'm going to cut around them roughly and then probably trace them. Um, I don't think I want to just cut them out and stick them onto the page. I think I want to actually paint them on. But I thought it would be handy to have them in different colours just to, so I can place them and that's about the right size. So printing them off four to a page just worked for me. Now, because of what I've done on other pages, it's all starting to get a little bit lumpy here. So sometimes what I'm going to have to do is bring in a little cutting board or something. Yeah, that'll work. And then something under here. There. I think that will give me a <laughs> reasonably flat surface to work on. Okay, we'll do that. Right, so I need to get my manky looking paint palette because I never clean it. Occasionally I do this and it's great fun. Look. <gasps> Just peel off layers and layers of acrylic paint. I don't like washing it all down the sink, partly because you know, it might give us problems with plumbing and also it's not very environmentally friendly to put it on into the water system. So usually I keep an art journal or something handy and I brush all my excess off onto that and it just becomes a background for something, some future project or um, sometimes what happens is I think I'm going to come back and use up the rest of the paint but by the time I get back to it it's dried up and that's what's happened here. And I know it's not ideal to put it in the bin either. Huh, maybe I should keep it. I mean look that's actually quite pretty, it's got gold and things in it. Wow, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? And look, I've harvested all these peeled layers of paint. And I'm just going to hang on to those. Because I've got a feeling I might be able to do something arty farty with them. Right, let's get on with this page. So I'm going to mix a couple of kind of brick colours. And I'm just going to mix up a few kind of red bricky kind of colours because those are the bricks we tend to have in my neck of the woods. I suppose in some ways that is a kind of concrete colour. It's maybe more in keeping with graffiti but yeah, you see it everywhere don't you? 
Actually, if it's really good graffiti, I love it. And I'll see how I go painting directly on the page. It might be that I end up stopping and having to gesso the page first, but I can see how I go. I'm not going to worry about keeping the words because I know it's this is a wall and I know about what, what my plans for the peephole are. Yeah. So I'm going to take each colour and just randomly go somewhere on the page with it. So that's my first coat, but I'm kind of thinking I quite enjoyed doing that and I think it might add more interest if I just went over with another little glaze. must uh, remember to do a bit of splashing when I put my graffiti on because I think I will like that and it's just occurred to me it might be quite fun to just sponge these last little bits okay I'm gonna go through with a mixture of this pastel pencil possibly the white pastel pencil as well and this I think that's a Prismacolor quite good quality colour pencil and just Neaten up the edges and sort of redefine the mortar before I then go on and add my graffiti. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks a lot more brick wally than it did a few minutes ago. And I quite enjoyed doing that. And I want to remember in a minute, when I'm done with my main graffiti, I want to put something like the writings on the wall. But in small, I might, I might just use this as if someone's just like scribbled on the wall. You know, you just get, you get some beautiful graffiti and then you get something naff. You know, so-and-so was here or... Well, you know the kind of thing. So the next step, I think, is to decide where my graffiti is all going to go. So to do that, I'm going to just cut all of these up. I also did a couple of just like what would be my tag. That's what they call it. Get me being hip and down with the kids. You could choose the colour for the, the for the main text, but then the colour that it would graduate down to. So you can see it's a good example. You can see that was a green graduating down to a blue. Sometimes it didn't work. I mean, that looks that one looks like it's the same all the way down. It wouldn't have been. I didn't make any of them the same all the way down. So. Obviously some combos work better than others. But the whole process of doing this took me about 10 minutes. I mean, I'd have been hours trying to get this effect and probably still wouldn't have got it. So, well, you can also choose the background, so there I just let it stay in the uh, white graduating down to black. So here's all my graffiti words to play with. So I was thinking I'd either end up with, I'll work out which way that is, 
Oh, the tag could go over there because that's different. My first thought was to try and make that rainbow, and that was red going into orange, but it isn't too obvious there. But that doesn't matter because I'm going to colour them myself anyway. I'll actually, paint them on myself. Quite like that for my tag. All that, actually. So the next step is to use some tracing paper because I really I just don't think is it worth me trying to cut these and just stick them down. And if it is too finickety then I just won't bother. Bother cutting the other one, let's just see what this one looks like. Yeah, that'd be good. I think those are accurate enough for my purposes. Let's bring my book back in. So I've got party, party. So can I might overlap them in a creative way? What about that? It looks graffiti ish, doesn't it? Just stick these together like that. Use those two bits of purple tape I already had out. That'll keep the whole thing together. Put something down. Over it a minute. Give it a really good. Oh, this is a very, very old paper folder. They don't really break, they do get a bit notched on the edges sometimes. They don't really break. Okay. Now I see how. Well, this tape comes off. Yeah. That's got the effect I wanted. And now I'm thinking I want to kind of mix up the colours that I've got there in my acrylic paints. So I've got a bit of white there. I've got a whole bunch of paints here. Like expensive ones like the golden. And then I've got these cheapy craft paints which will be fine for this, so I kind of think I've got hmm, almost all the colours I need in there. Also just so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use these colours because I think that kind of covers what I've got there. And I've got some white already, and then I've also got these paint pens. I 
Right, now I've mixed them up. I think I'll go to a smaller brush. And I'm just going to um, go over these letters that were already there. Right, let's just get these really properly stuck down now. Right. I should be using as well as these coloured pens, which I'll use there. I might use some of them on here as well, and I shall use a black and a white acrylic paint marker as well. So the black to sort of uh, frame around the letters, and the white to add highlights. square because it might be handy for cutting the matching hole on the other side. So I'm going to trust this purple tape again. It's dry there. And I'm just going to mask off an area for my window frame. Going to press it down too hard, this purple tape. Or if you can't press it down at all, it's sort of defeating the object because you need to make sure there's no, it doesn't want to let paint underneath. It'll already be dry enough for another, for another coat. not leave this stuck on any longer than I need to. Ah, see that is working nicely now, it's not taking the paint off. I think pressing it down hard when it's just you know an inkjet printer on cheap paper is not a fair test of this purple tape. Yeah, the only thing it's pulled off there is that bit of pastel pencil that was around that brick which is only to be expected. It's not taken up at any of the paint. Lovely, yes, that's that's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Excellent. Well, I'm glad I didn't waste my money on that then. So, I'm going to need the person on here so that when it's pulled up, the person appears. Let's just pencil this in. little figure on here.
I've got a punch somewhere that cuts a file tab shape, so I will probably use that. Um, I will go once it's all completely dry. I'll be going back in with like a, a black fine liner pen to add some details there, and maybe some contrasting stripes on the top or spots or something. Um, now, construction-wise, I need to. Add the extra page behind here. I'm going to put a little piece of acetate so it actually looks like a real window. And then I need to create a little channel here. And I'll probably do that by cutting little strips of card that, that this will run in. And then something at the bottom here that will stop it when it hits those strips. So I will, I will put that together and then um, come back and show you in a minute. Right. So I've got my um, strip ready so that you'll see an empty window and then when you pull up the tab I will be peeking out guiltily looking at my graffiti handwork, handiwork. <laughs> um, now, what I need to do is create a channel on the other side for this to slide up and down in. And then I need to work out where I want this, where I want the end stop to be. So let's do the channel first. I've cut some strips of quarter inch, quarter inch strips of card. I had to glue two layers together because this card is very thin. It's not much more than heavy paper really. So I've, I've I actually cut six quarter inch strips and I glued them together. Before I forget, I'm just going to put my little piece of this is just I saved this from packaging and things. But you could use like overhead paper or overhead film or you know, if you've got acetate sheets, whatever. Even a piece of that uh, kind of crinkly plastic film like uh, this kind of thing. I had some beads in that, you could use that, would work as well. Stick that over. So then when you look from here it will look a bit more like a real window. It's got a glass on it. And now I'm going to put these two pieces on. Now they need to fit either side of the strip. And I want this strip to travel within them. I don't so it's got to fit them could be fairly close to it but not so close that it won't travel up and down so I'm going up nearly to the top I don't want it sticking out but I'm trying to keep it parallel to the edge of the page let's double check before that sets yeah that'll be just enough to stop it moving about too much but not so close that it won't move at all. A couple of these little strips. And I shall stick one there and one on here. Oh, my black paint didn't go far enough down here, did it? Let's just do that there. So while I'm waiting for those to fully dry, I'm going to add my extra um, details with a, with a fine black pen. One minute, I'm going to give myself purple hair. Leave that to dry for a minute. So I've got the. I could just fold the top of this over and make a tab, or I could draw a stripey one, or I could cut a 
just cut any old shape but I do have this lovely circle a uh, lovely tab file tab punch one of my favorite punches so stamping up one I don't know if I still make it it was quite an investment when I bought it years ago but that was years ago and I have used it and used it and used it and used it some more so it was worth worth it they're very good quality and it just happens to be a, a design that is just so useful in lots of the things I do. I could, while I'm waiting, just add some little detail on here. Just to make this look more like a window frame. It's more like a picture frame than a window frame, really, to be fair, but, you know. She's done. She looks guilty. So she should. Okay, it's gonna go in there. This. Go in here. So quick pull this up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fool, I've done it the wrong way around. Okay, so this is working really nicely. Empty room. Boop. Now I wish I put curtains in. So she's peeping from behind curtains. I wonder if I could still slot some down there. Oh, you can tell I've had a busy, <laughs> a busy session. I can't sort of pull up, pull the camera out any further to show you, but I'm now down to about a nine inch square space to work in. <laughs> Right, let's have a bit of pretty paper. Oops, quite like this orange spot. That would be a nice contrast if you wouldn't it? So it's got to run from about there to, to there. It's going to be a bit tricky. We can do it. Much, much easier to do this before I glued it all together, but yeah, that would have been too easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, I'm going to faff around with this for a while and come back to you. Right, I've got my um, pull tab done. Everything seems to be working nicely. Um, I'm, all I need to do now is add some details to this graffiti here using my paint pens. Well, I've got three acrylic paint pens and I've got a black um, pit artist pen. So this is the brush one. So I'm just going to redo the black outlines to accentuate those. Put some little details on with the paint pens and then I might do some splattering and drippage with acrylic paints afterwards. I shall probably use one of these pens or possibly um, coloured pencils to just do a this is a wall on here. Right so I'll fast forward through that and, and I'll see you back at the other end.
Okay, so I think that's done. As done as it's going to go. Guilty party. Mm -hmm. I should have a big arrow. I'm just going to add a little bit of... Uh, detail to this. Right, so because the colour I've got left is the green and a bit of the white, I've mixed them together and I'm just going to do a few painty splashes. So I'm going to cover this up because I don't want it. I don't want a bit of a splash on there actually, but I don't want it too much. Just a little bit of really liquid just running down, I think, as well. So that's the page I just put back now, just the title of the page. This is not a one, I'm just going to randomly write this on here. That kind of scribbly writing kids do when they're writing on on the wall or a toilet door. <laughs> so there we are, that's my This is a wall. Pages 211 and 212. Let's just have one more peep at the culprit. Hey! Arty farty. AFA. Arty farty Annie. If you want to check out my blog, that's what it's called, artifartyanny.com. I'll put some of my more serious um, attempts at art on there. If you're interested, have a look. Um, so thanks ever so much for joining me today. Um, it's a bit of a long rambly one, but I'll try and uh, tidy it up before I post it. <laughs> um, and I will put it on the list with all the other This Is Not A Book pages if you want to have a, if you want to check out anything you might have missed. Thanks very much for coming again and I'll see you again soon. Bye.